All right. The star of the show. Well, the co-star of the show. Breadfruit. <laughs> this is like baby breadfruit. Smoke. So you burp it like this, a little bit, and then you open it. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. And then you basically just drop the breadfruit right on the wood. So I'm gonna roast these similar to how they would do it in Jamaica. So you can normally, you could do it on the stove top if you've got like fire, um, and then you just rotate it and char it on the outside. How do you know when to rotate it? When it's pitch black. So, it, I mean, it should be completely charred um, on all sides. Good morning, how is everybody doing today? Hey, hey good to see you. Hey. Hello. Well, Hello. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I can't wait. Yeah, you get to do the breadfruit since that's your that's your area of expertise. Okay. Yeah. I can handle that. Cool. This breadfruit looks very sad. <laughs> it looks very sad. It's like, why did you do this to me? Oh my lord. It's what? It's overdone. Mm. And when you know it's done, you get a small knife and stick it in the middle here. Mm -hmm. If it comes all clean, then you're good. Mm -hmm. All right, we got tomatoes. Did we grow these? These are from the garden or the Those grocery are store? From the garden. I can never get a straight line. We've had this conversation. But yeah. I also can't part my hair straight, so it's so, just a me thing. Okay, this is a method I've never tried before. Usually, I try and hold it. I know, which is, like, which is why I keep our insurance updated. Cut my palm off. Yeah, I know. Child, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, thanks for lunch. And um, welcome. It was very good. Appreciate it. And what did you want to talk about today? Hmm. We're going to talk about what we always talk about. Um, what might that be? Life and money and it's okay. Have you seen an episode of this before? You just haven't been in one. This is your first time. You're like a special, you're our first special guest. I'm a newcomer, yes. You're not a newcomer. <laughs> you know your way around our place, but this is your first time. It's so our first time ever having another person at the table. Great. You're I'm, the star of the show. How do you yay. feel being the star? I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Red carpet. Yes. Yeah. I, even though I didn't get it, but. <laughs> Imagine a yeah. red carpet. Uh, okay. I got yeah. the red carpet down. Yeah. You got hardwood. <laughs> yes. And a red stripe. That's, and a red stripe. That's good. Yes. That's good. Um, <laughs> how are you? I'm doing great today. I'm doing real good. Did you like your fish? It was great. I'm sorry yeah. if it wasn't like you remember. No, it in was Jamaica. It was very good. It was yeah. very good. I have no complaints about the fish at all. <laughs> it's a high bar. It, oh, good. It, it was. It was good. good. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Um, when was the last time you were in Jamaica? 2012. You went 12. for the the 50th anniversary independence. independence. Yes. How was that? Well, that was fabulous. That, that was fabulous. Um, and there was a whole group of like 30 of us. Yeah. We had a fabulous time. It was it was really great. Were you, when was Independence Day? August. In Jamaica? August. What year? Um, 2012. No, the actual. What year? Yeah. Oh, 1962. Were you there? Yeah, I was in high school. Really? Mm hmm Did I started, you? I started high school 61. Can you imagine living yeah. in a country <laughs> That got its independence. Where it became independence. Yeah. Right. It, it was, we're so accustomed to thinking yeah. that independence is something that has happened like no, hundreds of we years. We were ago. under yeah. the British. We were alive. We were under the British. So you have rule. memories when you were under British rule and memories mm -hmm. of the day. Mm -hmm. What did you do on in the day you became an independent? Well, it, it was just a huge celebration. It was like carnival. Yeah. It okay. was. I mean, the entire country was yeah. celebrating. 
it was music and dancing and food and it was just a big party. Um, the, the reigning party um, appointed a governor general, which is like the governor mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, other cabinet members and it was just a big to do a whole week of celebration. Wow. It was, it was, it was nice. It, it yeah. felt, it was different, but it felt good. It was different. No longer had to sing God, um, the gracious queen and all that. We had our own national anthem. It was different. We, I mean, independently, you had to have your own stuff now. Yeah. No longer British this, British that, and everything else. But it was, it was, it was exciting. So, like a lot of people, struggle talking to their parents about money. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been talking to you about money for years, but I'm curious. Did you like? Did you talk to your parents about money? Like, is it? Is the issue that we're having, or the challenge, and by we, I mean just in general. Generational. Yeah. We never talked about money because there was no money. Mm. There was never a conversation about money. Because my mother didn't work. It was five of us. My dad worked. You remember the movie Fences? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That little brown envelope? Mm -hmm. That's what my, my father brought home on a Friday evening. Yeah, it is. $76.22. You see this, Bono? I ain't gonna give but six of that back. Oh, you ought to stop telling that lie. He ain't lines. Thanks, Rose. Mm. And he just handed it to my mom, and that money was to do everything. And he got that money from doing... Working. He worked as a welder at the factory in Froome. Froome? From F R O M E. Okay. It's it's the it's the big factory where all the sugar cane goes to and where they make sugar and rum. Mm. Yeah, and he worked there. Okay. Yeah, we, and he had to ride his bicycle from Petersfield to from which to me could be about maybe fifteen miles. Fifteen? Yeah. Wow. That's one way going. Oh Lord. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was the only mode of transportation. Monday through Friday. And he would bring his check home. Like he, it, why do you remember? It's not check, it's, oh, it's I mean, cash. With cash. Yeah. But why do, you, why do you remember that so much? Because it was, it was one, you got one, it was a five pound note. At the time we had British currency. Mm -hmm. It was a five pound note. Everybody got one and he just gave it to my mom. That's it. And she paid all the bills and took well, care of the Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is we didn't have rent to pay. Yeah. We didn't have electricity. We didn't have phones, so it was just for food. Mm. I probably was a teenager when we got electricity. Wow. Did you have electricity when you got its independence? Yes. So it would have been 19, early 1960s. Maybe in the mid 60s, yeah. Yeah, 15, wow. 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could, you, it was so funny. I was just talking to- I remember, I remember there was a lamp, sorry, cause I'm like mm -hmm. having these flashbacks. Mm -hmm. I remember grandma had an old kerosene lamp. Yep. It, was, it, was, it, it wasn't that, old, it was just a kerosene lamp. Yeah, like the never ending, <laughs> the never ending bottle of cocoa butter. That was, it was just always there. Is this the only one you have? Only one what? Breadfruit. There's two other breadfruits that are half roasted outside that we don't really have a lot of time to roast. Do we have to show us eating this? Because this cannot be eaten, I'm sorry. I'm not saying it's a great breadfruit. It's a bad. I'm, I'm talking about your word choice. Inedible it, it, is it a is. bit extreme. It's it's not. It's a tad extreme. It is. It's it's not ready for roasting. We'll it scrap be. the breadfruit. We won't. We won't scrap the breadfruit. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Mom won. Hey, Julian. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> So if you didn't talk fun. about money, because there was no money. There was no money. It's like, we don't have any money. <laughs> That's the conversation. That's the conversation. <laughs> it's, I mean, we never asked for anything because the only time you got a new outfit was Christmas. That's it. Mm -hmm. You got a new dress, you get a new pair of shoes, and everybody got a new outfit for Christmas. And the reason we could do that is the fact that my father was also a small farmer. He had sugar cane. And once in the, back. in the back, yeah. And once the cane is sold, then he would get some money, and from that money he had to pay somebody to cut the cane, 
for me to take it to the factory and for manure to, to manure the cane. Mm. So what was left was, you know, a little bit of money that we had to stretch <laughs> the way to last us for as long as possible. Across how many kids? It's five kids. Wow. Um, and everybody was fed and nobody was ever hungry. That's good. Like what's your earliest memory of like learning about money? Was it a book or a class or you just sort of learned as you went? You learn as you go along. If you have money, you buy something. You didn't have money, you don't buy anything. And do you have one of those? So when did you come to the U.S.? Oh, that's a good question. You keep asking me these questions. 1972. And how much money did you have in your pocket? $50 I came here with. It was a lot That's of money. That's like the back classic then. story. Yeah. It's I came here with fifty dollars. Didn't know anybody in my Fif pocket. Fifty dollars, yeah. and I knew two friends. One, they both were in the Bronx. Yeah. And got to the airport, and the friend of mine who was supposed to pick me up, she lived in Queens. And I dialed that number about five thousand times. <laughs> no answer. We just ring and ring and ring and ring and ring and ring, and I'm like. What am I supposed to do? I was there. I probably got in maybe 4.30ish. I was here until 8.30. Wow. Could not reach her. So I, thank God I had a little book with my other friend in the Bronx. And I called her. I said, Ivana. She said, and she answered the phone. I'm like, thank God. <laughs> she said, where are you? I said, I'm at the airport. And I explained to her what happened. She says, okay, take a cab and come. I said, okay. So I went outside and I saw this little, this old man, nice Greek old man. And I told him I was hungry. And he says, okay, sit in the car. He says, come sit right beside me. And he says, I'll get you a hot dog. I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Never didn't know what a hot dog was. And he got me a hot dog and a soda. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> and he drove me to the Bronx. By the time we got there, it was dark now. I was so exhausted. Did you like the hot dog? That was my question. Who cares? I was hungry. I ate it. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it was nasty, but I ate it. <laughs> so, Dijon mustard. Shake, shake. Give that two solid squirts. One. That's good. Oh, that was one solid mm, squirt. That's a Texas squirt. <laughs> and now I'm just pouring in. Twice as much oil. And shake it like a salt shaker. Shake it like a salt shaker. So the mustard actually helps emulsify it. It's done. It seems like mostly any other immigrant. I mean, you come to mm -hmm. the United States, obviously, money plays a role in that. Like, mm -hmm. what can you tell me a little bit about? Like what prompted you to want to leave home? Oh. Because I mean, you, you said you only knew two people, right? So you're leaving your family, mm -hmm. friends, your culture, everything, and everyone pretty much that you Well, know. I actually came here on a student visa. Mm. Okay. And my goal was to go to college. Well, when I kind of got myself settled, I did start. And the funny thing where I worked across, where I worked right across the street was the community college. And I registered and started college. But here's the problem. Once you start and they ask, you had to fill out this form, whether you're a citizen or a non-citizen. And I had non-citizen. And I, because at the time I wasn't, I had a student visa. So non-student visa, non-student students had to pay. I'm like, oops, I gotta go. <laughs> so I left. I couldn't go back because I mean, I was just, I think I was making 45, dollars a week. You can't pay college out of that plus rent. Mm -hmm. So I said skabooch. Skabooch. Bye. <laughs> skabooch. Stay yeah. there. Out of there. <laughs> yeah. Stay there. I, okay. I left. I, I never went back. All right, I'm fast forwarding here. So then I was born in 1980 mm -hmm. and we had electricity. Right? Yeah, and we and had phone. phone. Yes. We had all these modern conveniences. Yes, we had everything. Um, what lessons do you remember teaching me about money? 
I don't think I did a good job on that. Um, Why do you say that? Well, I, I did I really teach you about money? I don't think we really sat down and had a conversation about money. Did, do you recall that? I don't remember. No, I don't remember like a formal conversation. It's not like the birds and the bees talk. Like, let's talk yeah. about yeah. money. But I remember it was more like just sprinkle through life. Like, it's like hygiene. It's not like you sat me down one day and said, yeah. listen, this is how you clean everything mm -hmm. on your body. You just sort of learn along the way. So, yeah, I remember being taught some things. I was trying to remember, I guess, what you remembered. Like, I'll give you an example. And this is not a lesson, but being a nosy kid, I remember you used to have a blue, I guess I would call it like a briefcase. It was like a metal briefcase, and it had like a latch on it, and you kept it in the closet. And there were savings bonds in there. Mm -hmm. Do you remember those? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I remember, you know, I was a kid, I, I don't know. I, had, I knew nothing. I think I was telling you, because you were telling me about... Um, penny wrappers yes and i remember just how clueless i was i remember the first time i saw a penny wrapper i saw a stack of penny wrappers and i thought it was money i thought it was a different kind of money so i thought i yeah. ran across like several bills <laughs> he came up yeah i was like oh my god like what are all these wrappers <laughs> hanging around i didn't know they were wrappers yeah, i just thought it was thought money it was, mm, dollars yeah different dollars anyway similarly i saw these I want to say they were like $50 savings, savings bonds. bonds. Yeah. And they were just, you know, just fancy. They were like on card stock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just thought it was like a treasure. The way we plan ahead is by investing in United States savings bonds. I think they're the best investment that a young family can make. You know, it's like in the closet and it's there. So to me, that was a lesson, like, you know, that you were obviously at some point invested in something. I had no idea. Yeah, I was getting, what, I used to buy one every month. I used to buy one every month for him, and, and actually, for me? yeah, I was keeping them. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I mean, I was keeping them, you know, like a, and then like Claire, uh, his godmother, would give me one for his birthday every year, and Yvette would give me one. And well, how were you introduced to it? Through your job, they they offered through through your job. So it was like a benefit that you could buy. Yeah, you bonds? you if it was um, fifty dollars, you buy it for half price, or for twenty five dollars, mm -hmm. and over five over ten years, it would mature to the fifty dollars. So it was a savings. It, the in, the the value would increase over time. Oh. Yeah, it's like an investment. You know, yeah, you that's buy how my dad learned. you buy for twenty five, <clears throat> but if you kept it for ten years, you get the full value for fifty dollars. Yeah, my dad was introduced to investing the same way. His uncles were all serving in Vietnam and they were giving government bonds for the same thing mm -hmm. where you could buy them cheap mm -hmm. and then eventually if you mm -hmm. hold on to them, you do your service, then mm -hmm. you sell them mm -hmm. and yeah. that was their first form of investing. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, um, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I certainly didn't know that they were for me. Where are, where are they? <laughs> I, would like, oh. I would like to cash in though. <laughs> It's 40 years of interest at this point. Oh, that, that would be nice now. Yeah. I would let's, like, start, let's start making them know, though. Um, yeah. But I also remember you used to be a part of a susu. Yeah. But you didn't call it a susu. Well, they call it a partner um, back in the day. I, I never fancied it. I did it because Claire insisted that I be part of this because you can do it. I'm like, I can't wait that long for my money. I, I'm not <laughs> doing it. I said... As a matter of fact, even before I left Jamaica, my mother always used to be the banker, and and I'm like, that's so much headache. Oh, she was the, the, the she, person that hold and yes, held and controlled the money. Yeah, and I looked at some of the issues. There's always one person who always had an issue. Well, this came up on the campaign, but they got their money last week. Okay, right, mm. right. And I'm like, uh-uh, uh -uh. can't do that, yeah. can't do it. And the same thing with Claire. She's like. Well, she had one that lasted for a year. I'm like, oh no, I, I can't give somebody $20 or $50 to my paycheck every single week for a year. Oh no. I said, what if I drop that tomorrow? He's got my money. No. <laughs> Ideally, you would want to receive your pot at a time that works for you. So it could be like exactly. your birthday yes. or like and most Christmas. People, and most people request that. They, for example, they're planning a trip to go somewhere. They want it at yeah. close to that time. Or um, maybe their child is going off to school or something or mm. something. But they always 
But here's the trick. There's some people who are very slick. They would come in like, you're a newcomer. You're coming in for the first time. And they want the part the first week. And somebody's like, oh, no. You can't. <laughs> the banker would say, you just got here. You yeah, can't get you it. Yeah, you to the and So some, is there a rule? Like, oh, you yes. have to have gone through a couple cycles? Oh, yes. There are rules. It's like some people want to get last. But then, Why? see, it's a, it's a trick. And once you get last, then it recycles. And then you come back and you get first. So you get a back-to-back, they call it a back-to-back hand. They call it, because you used to call it a partner. They call it a partner. I thought you called it a kitty. Mm -mm. So what's a kitty? I don't know what a kitty is. (laughs) I don't know what a kitty is. I've never heard that phrase. Maybe somebody from another country may call it a kitty, but in Jamaica, it's either Susu or partner. Unless they change the name to something that changes since I left there, but... I don't know it to be that. I'm going to do some research. Go right ahead. I could have sworn you called it a kitty. Mm-mm. What do you call a piggy bank? Piggy bank. So you don't call anything in your life a kitty other a than cat. a kitty. Other than a cat. <laughs> a kitten. A little cat. A oh, cat. my God. Uh, that, I feel like I'm going to do some research. I don't know the cat thing. Okay. That's amazing. Is that the right consistency? Sure. It should be really tart, though. Yeah. Is it smooth? Is it perfect? Yeah. All right, so then it probably needs some more hard water. It should be tart. Because what happens is, if it's not hitting you in the back of the throat, like right here. I mean, I just had a dab. Woo. Do you season your uh, fish with like salt or pepper? No, if I'm going to use, if I'm going to do jerk, then you don't need any salt or pepper because it has all the seasonings that you need. If you add salt, then it's going to be salty. So you don't have to worry about it being too spicy. Are you going to eat this or am I going to eat this? <laughs> Who's going to do the eating? Good question. Who's going to do the eating? You or me? Is this my fish or your fish? People really struggle with talking with their parents about like lots of things, but money especially. And so I want to talk a little bit more about that um, because because so, I, I didn't know that you didn't think that you did a good job. I think that you did as good as a job as you could have done, right? You, you, told, you taught me the importance of saving. You would always stress to me to understand the value of a dollar um, that's how you used to frame it up. Like you need to understand the value of a dollar. Yeah. Um, you know, you taught me allowance and tithing and all of those things were a part of my upbringing and, and it, it shaped my, my, my life. So I would say you taught me a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's beautiful. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making, I'm not, I don't think I'm saying anything. I'm just saying that's that's what I could not make this up. Remember, I could have I might have made up a kitty at this point. I don't know. I have memories of the word that clearly, and I guarantee you, you, piggy bank. bank. I'm telling you, piggy bank. Anyway, finish your thought. I'm I'm gonna prove both of y'all wrong. I know a lot of people are very much invested in your story Mm -hmm. because they see themselves, I guess, in us, and they see their parents in you. And so I guess the first part of the question is financially, how are you? How do you feel? Because we've we've gone through a couple of things, right? And so you've had, it's fair to say, you've had some financial challenges Mm -hmm. through life. And so we've come out of that. And when did we, you sold your home? 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 18. And you said it was the... (laughs) Happiest day As your, your only son, I feel some kind of way about that, but okay. The happiest day of your life. Do you remember that day? Yeah, it Do you was, still feel like it was the happiest day of your life? Or well, like the, you probably just, the right phrase. It should have been the best decision I've made in a long, long time. Really? Yeah, I mean, it has its ups and downs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, I still have a lot of emotions. Not, wouldn't say have a lot. There's still an emotional attachments to it because it's, it's the, my first house. Mm-hmm. And I drove by the other day and the guy's not taking care of the garden and I'm mad. <laughs> 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 I look at my flowers and I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, it's, um, 
it's a relief in the sense that you don't have to worry about fixing anything and um, I'm debt free, mm -hmm. no debt. Um, you know, the, the truth of the matter is that all my money went into that house. Yeah. Put that way. All my money went into that house. Yeah. I put a lot of money in that house to bring it to what it was. Mm -hmm. So, um, I remember it was like a constant project. I was always, it was yeah. always fixing, something. fixing, fixing. And, and by the time you're done fixing one thing on the other yeah, side, you gotta fix something else. There's something else. So yeah. you can't even adjust that room. Yeah. So you just close the, the door. And the gutters need to be the fixed. Gutters, right. Yeah. And there was, yeah. The, there was a leak from the roof and there was water coming in. And in, the, in the living room, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I got that fixed because I got a new roof, which was yeah. fine. Um, wow. My deductible was 500 but I guess the roof was so bad and he took pictures of it and I honestly was a little weary about it. And he stood right on my porch and called the insurance company and told him, he says, I send you pictures right now. This roof needs to be replaced and they approved it just like that. Wow. So the good news is you're debt free and you're still debt free. Yes. It's been a couple of years now. Yes. Um, the bad news is what? Need some money now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need a stimulus check right now. <laughs> yeah, you're still on your fixed income. Oh yeah, yeah. that's not going to change. I need yeah. fixed. It stays there. It and stays. you know, right now, I look and I said, thank God I don't have to go to work. I know. I feel for it's the people. Stressful. They feel for the people who don't have jobs and they're not coming back. Mm -hmm. Not anytime soon. What are they going to do? You're going to have more homelessness. Yeah. And the foreclosures is going to get to the ceiling. It it's going to yeah, be bad. Yeah, I mean, imagine it's the going stress. Be bad. And again, I'm not suggesting for anyone, right? But imagine how stressful it would have been if you also had a home to pay for right now, right? Um, and I just think a lot of people have they they hold on to these romantic ideas about owning a home because that was a big. I remember that was a big like it was a dream. Right? It was. It really was. You know, because I remember the first time we walked into that home. Yeah, I remember. And you. he said to me, "Where are you buying this dump?" <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> you live and you learn. Well, let me ask you this: Would you say that there is an expectation amongst? Well, one, do you have that expectation, and do you believe your friends have that expectation that their kids? provide or help out for them in their older age or older years? Some do and some don't. Mm -hmm. And it, it breaks my heart when they don't. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you have to look at the big picture. Without that parent, you wouldn't be here in the first place. And it breaks my heart to know that you have a parent who need something and you don't make an effort to help them. Right. I think it's very sad. Yeah. I think it's very sad. Um, bear in mind that you might have your own family, but your mother brought you here. Mm -hmm. You got to do something for her or your dad. Yeah. You got to. Yeah. You have to find out what their immediate need is and you have to try to fill that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the least you can do. That's the least you can do. Yeah, that's the least you can do. Is that how you felt when you were younger and, you know? Oh, God. I mean, sometimes I sit home and I literally shed a tear that they're not here, that I can fix them a meal. It's, 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 it's like a thank you and a commitment. And uh, I sit sometimes and have a really nice meal. And I said, God, I wish my dad, I wish he was here right now to enjoy this fish. Because remember, they're not going to be here forever. That's right. I'm not going to be here forever. And you're going to sit down the days, remember this day, and say, you know, remember that day when we had that fish? Mm -hmm. It was so good. Man, I wish she was here. You're making another fish. I yeah. wish she was here to enjoy it. But those days are going to come. They're going to come, believe it or not. Yeah. They're going to come. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not here to start beef, but there are, it's interesting to hear you say that because there's a predominant belief by a particular set of financial, um, I guess, gurus, for mm -hmm. lack of a better word, that would d slightly disagree with you, with your point of view. They mm -hmm. would say, "Mom and Dad, you're on your own. You gotta, 
you know, that's your life. You made these decisions. You are where you are for whatever reason. This is my life. I do appreciate you and I love you, but you know, I've got my own, my own life to take care of. Like one, were you aware of that? And two, I mean, I kind of know the answer, but like, how do you feel about that? I think that's wrong. I think that is wrong. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, every, I think every one of us as parents make mistakes. Some grave, some, okay. Let me back up for a minute. What if I got strung out on drugs now? For whatever reason, it might lead me to that. How would you feel? Would you be willing to take care of me to get me back on my feet or you wouldn't care? No. <laughs> Do I... you, so that's what I'm saying. You know, it's a decision that sometimes is out of our hands. Sometimes we do stupid things, even though we're adults, and there are consequences for it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean everybody deserves a second chance, you know. And I look back at even some of those basketball players don't know their names. We don't hear their mothers were on drugs or they were doing this and that, or their dad was whatever in jail, and now they got them straight and they're back together. Um, I will still go back to the fact that when you are a parent and um, you raise a child to the best of your ability, and as Jamaicans would use the phrase, when they pass the worst, which means that they are self-sufficient, they can take care of themselves, it does not mean that you cannot offer your parent. Your parent shouldn't have to ask. I think it's in your, in your gut. She'd say, you know what? Let me give mom this 20 bucks. She might need it, but let me just give her $20. Or let me give her $10. Just, just surprise her. Here's a little something. This is, this is how Jamaicans operate. This is what I know, you know? Um, and that is something that I think should still happen. It's interesting because <clears throat> in the U.S., that promise of being taken care of is usually made by the employer. So our parents grew up thinking that our employer, their employers would take mm -hmm. care of them in their old age through pensions, mm -hmm. or the government would take care of them through Social Security. And so when you look at where they spent their time, mm -hmm. a lot of it was nurturing those it, relationships so, exactly. with so work. That yeah, yeah, so that they can be taken comes. care of. Exactly. Well, one entity didn't hold up their end of the deal. Exactly. Pensions went to the door. Pensions went out the door. Social Security is on its last leg. And so now that pressure is being rerouted mm -hmm. where there isn't necessarily a connection or um, a sense of obligation. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that I look forward to doing because there's a lot of healing that needs to happen in families for that to be the default mm -hmm. feeling mm -hmm. for a lot of people as they're trying to take care of their current state versus, you know, taking care of your parents. There's just a, everything's changed and we're trying to make up for massive institutional failures through personal finance. And that's, that's a really difficult place to be in. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. one of the things that speaking on behalf of our generation right like there's there is a um a lot of pressure yeah. mm -hmm. on us mm -hmm. um, there is. Be because we are you know we're a great example of this we are in a better position than our parents were in mm -hmm. we're earning more money earlier in our lives mm -hmm. we have access to more things than um you know anyone else in our family many of us right to your point partly due to the sacrifice i mean maybe you maybe you partly got to, to maybe you got to college yeah. because your godmother and your aunt 100%. both would give you a savings bond and that would lead to mm -hmm. something else mm -hmm. and now it led to and it may not have paid for everything in college but it was enough to get you over the hump yeah. and that was the thing that got you there and once you were there you were able to then find your way um so you've got a lot of people that are in this position and they have kids but they're also dealing with student loan debt. 
Yeah, everything's more expensive. They're dealing with like rising costs of healthcare. Yeah. They're dealing with homes that are like pretty much this, this the squeezing of the middle class. It's either you're living, you know, sort of on the uh, more so like in the working or lower end, or everything is high end. It's just significantly less in between. Um, and then on top of that, now you've got, you know, the sort of expectation to honor that cultural commitment that you just said, where it's mm -hmm. like, I want to do those things, but every but. I've got to think about what I'm gonna do with that $20. I've got $20. Mm -hmm. Am I gonna give myself a break because Lord knows I need it? Am I going to invest it into my own kid's future? Um, or am I going to pay it back? Yeah. And that's sort of what they're dealing with now. Um, and I'm not here to say like, which is better, which is right, which is wrong. I just, I hope your generation, we've had this conversation, but I hope your generation understands that part too. It's not easy. It may be easier because there's a, there's a tendency to assume things are easy because it's easier for you, right? So because it's easier for me, cer certain things are easier for me. That doesn't mean that everything is easy. I've got lots of decisions and things to make. We both do, but um, I, I hope people in your generation understand that part too, that it's, you know, got a lot going on, you know, trying to figure out all these different things and um, they're part of what's called the sandwich generation. You know, you're, you're sandwiched in between having to take care of your future and, and your the past. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't have the answers. <laughs> Other than I think everyone needs to do the math and, and also reconcile that with their personal situation. That's why we say the right answer to pretty much every question should start with, well, it depends. <laughs> Well, it depends. And then you break down someone's personal situation. I can give you a rule of thumb, but it may not, it may not apply to you because maybe even if you do have a single mom from Jamaica, that's great. But if your mom is dealing with a physical ailment and has really expensive prescription drugs, that's different yeah. <laughs> from my mom or, you know, so it's, it's just tough. Delicious. This is very refined. I've never had fish like this, this fancy. Normally it's hot, swatting flies with one hand, sitting outside. We had just gotten back from Jamaica this time last year. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Had the best food. Mm. Best travel experience with Bo. Yeah. <laughs> Who's a champ? <laughs> Going back with him now would have been just so much oh nicer. Did you think our fire lifestyle was weird? Yeah. Right? If I think it was weird. Well, like, yeah. Well, I mean, maybe not now, but I mean, do you remember? Yeah, I mean, I was the clueless. first time we were talking about it. I was clueless. Um, I, I get it now, but at the time, I'm like, oh God, what are they getting into? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but I, I, I see now, as a matter of fact, I've been, um, I've talked to a couple of my friends and no, it, it's, it's fascinating. I think it's fascinating and sometimes I look back and you can't change the past and I said, if only I knew what a mutual fund was. <laughs> I've told a few people, I said, I know I would be a millionaire today. Because when you don't know, you don't know, That's right. you know. If I, I mean, I worked at the Sheraton for 22 years, but I didn't know. I, I used to look at the, the white folks coming on the subway and everybody was seated as white men with their New York Times folded up <laughs> and looking at this thing. And I'm like, what on earth are they looking at? Little fine prints. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the heck are they looking at? I couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then I went to my boss, Mary Beth O'Connor, and I said, Okay, I need to ask you a stupid question. She says, oh, they're looking at your stocks. I'm like, oh. And I remember when Jason Jackson was running for president and he said, Wall Street was not designed for black folks. Mm. Remember those words? Did you have any questions for us? Like any, any like, or anything you just were like curious about? Uh, not really. I, I think that um, today was it was a great day. I mean, this conversation I think um, was I think was very productive, and um, 
Unreal. And um, we can do this again. <laughs> Maybe we'll have you over again. <laughs> is something, is some, something you have to think about? <laughs> Oh, it depends, right? It, it depends. depends. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It just depends. It just depends. Okay. It just depends. Okay. Whoever's name lands twice, that person gets to go. Just to do the dishes? Just to do the dishes. Ooh. Hey, hey. Baby. <laughs> baby, you got it. <laughs> Yeah. So gonna do it again? No, no. Uh, that's no. it? No, that's Both it. Both of them? Oh, I yeah. mean, you can. No, one time That could have been a practice roll, and no. maybe you try, you know. God, no, he knows what Don't bring God into this. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. baby. It's you. That's the least you could do. That's the least. <laughs> you got fed. You got a whole fish. Yeah. Fine. Hallelujah. Fine. Hallelujah.